Hey guys, this is Chrissy with Everyday Tidbits. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. Today I have four delicious and easy recipes for you. Thank you for joining me. Hit that subscribe button down below and hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time I post. I do also have a new Instagram and I would love for you to follow me over there. Thanks again for joining me and now let's get started. This recipe is super easy and it's so delicious. You're just gonna need a package of smoked sausage, a pepper, an onion, and a stick of butter. And that's it. I'm gonna start by cutting my sausage into large pieces that would fit on a sub roll size and throw them into the crock pot. The next step is also to cut my peppers into large pieces. I'm just cutting them into thick strips. Next, I'm going to cut my onions also into thick pieces, relatively the same size as my peppers, and then I'm going to throw those into the crock pot as well. And the last step is to put a whole stick of butter right on top, cover your crock pot, and cook it on high for four hours. I never felt tomorrow closing in this fast. Oh, I guess time's in a rush. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back. This was so easy and so delicious. I served it on a sub roll with some cheese and it was a huge hit and it smelled so good. What it means to grow. This is another super easy recipe that's easy to adapt with any kind of jelly that you have in your house. I had fig jelly, so that's what I used, barbecue sauce, and a bag of meatballs. That's it. This could not get any easier. All you have to do is throw everything into your crock pot and stir it up. Wow, 
Once everything is added, give it a good stir, place the lid on, and cook it on high for three hours. Now I know what it means to grow. This is another easy recipe. I like to serve it as a side, but you could use it in place of pasta. It's spaghetti squash with garlic and butter. We're gonna start by cutting it in half and be careful when you're doing this. You're gonna need a sharp knife and make it sure it's steady. Then you're gonna to wanna to scrape out the seeds before you cook it. The time of God, it is just enough to get by. Yeah, it is just enough to get by. The next step is to spray the pan that you're cooking on and the inside of your squash with olive oil. And you can use this opportunity to salt and pepper it if you'd like or any other seasoning that you like. But I'm gonna skip that step at this time because when I add the garlic, that's gonna be quite enough seasoning for me. We're gonna bake this in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. And if you have a sticker on your squash from the store, make sure you remove that before putting it in the oven. I put my butter in the microwave for about 20 seconds to soften it, and then I added my garlic into it and stirred it. When your squash is done, let it cool down a little bit because it's going to be super hot. When it's cool enough to handle, you can start scraping it out with a fork. And the final step is to add your butter and any other seasonings that you desire to put in here. I'm just going to add my butter and some Italian seasoning. You can put salt and pepper in at this point. You could put chili powder. You can put anything that your heart desires. You can also add some tomato sauce on here, whatever you want. The possibilities are endless because this is such a blank and neutral canvas. The flavors are delicious, but I like to keep it simple with just my garlic butter and a little bit of Italian seasoning. And to me, this is the perfect side dish. Try not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at these beautiful stars, I want to drive a faster car. I served my spaghetti squash with my barbecue meatballs that I had made in the crock pot and they were perfect together. When I'm in this town, look at these beautiful stars, I want to take a trip to Mars, nothing can break me. I had lost the footage of this recipe, but it was so delicious and so easy to make. Just throw everything here that you see in the crock pot except for the stuffing and cook it on low for six hours. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Try not to. The ingredients for this are listed in the beginning of it, so you can take a screenshot. I had some bananas in the house that were going bad, so I figured I would use them up and make some banana muffins. I'm going to start by mixing my dry ingredients together first, and then I will do my wet ingredients separately. I don't know for how long I'll get 
to hold your hand To be your guiding light In the darkest of nights I will try, I will try To do my best until the day that I'll die I won't lie, I won't lie It's not going to be easy but I'll try don't you worry, I'm not going anywhere I will stay here, I will stay here And as long as my... I forgot to add my vanilla, so you'll see later on as I start to add the dry ingredients in, I add it later, but at this point you should have added your vanilla in with the wet ingredients. After you thoroughly mix your wet ingredients together, start adding your dry ingredients little by little. One day you will leave and start your own family. I will try, I will try to do my best until the day that I die. I won't lie, I won't lie. It's not going to be easy, but I'll try. Don't you worry, I'm not going anywhere. I will stay. Once your ingredients are fully mixed, you can fold in your nuts and your reserved banana. Thoroughly coat your cooking vessel with nonstick spray or olive oil spray like I'm doing. I'm using this mini bunt pan because I just thought it was so cute. You could definitely use a muffin tin or a brownie pan or a loaf pan if you're making banana bread. Either way, the cooking times will vary. So you're going to want to look at your specific um, pan and see how long it will take to cook in that pan. But for this little bunt pan, I just thought it was so cute. So that's what I'm going to use. For this pan that I'm using, I'm going to be preheating the oven to 375 degrees and cooking my little mini buns for 18 to 20 minutes. Lift me up higher above the clouds, won't you love? When the scenery is right. I'm just going to take a large serrated knife and cut off the bottom of these so that they sit evenly and straight on my plate. Just cause I'm too proud Whisper away My outdated doubts Somebody do me the courage And here's the finished product. They came out delicious, so moist and so flavorful. You can make a frosting for them if you want or a glaze. That would be delicious on top, but I chose not to do that because I didn't want them to be too sweet. I took them for work to have for breakfast and they just were delicious. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Hit that subscribe button down below and the bell notification so that you're notified every time I post. Take care, everybody.